Okay, today I'm going to be putting a giant two inch diameter red hot nickel ball in my vacuum chamber to see if it actually decreases in temperature or not. So I have here a two inch diameter nickel ball. Well, actually it's a steel ball, but I looked in the YouTube dictionary and any shiny metal ball that you heat up to a thousand degrees is by definition a red hot nickel ball, RHNB. Okay, let's heat up the ball. Okay, I think it's ready. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens when we set it on someone's hand. So this is a hand I bought online. It's for tattoo artists. It's supposed to replicate uh, human skin so they can practice doing tattoos on it. And I bought it to test what happens when you put a red hot nickel ball on it. Three, two, one. <laughs> Since this is made of silicone, silicone will not melt, but it'll definitely burn. So this is a pretty good replication of what would happen to a human hand. So look at this. This looks horrible. <laughs> The hand is just charred. So it's still covered with white from the silicone, but it should work just fine. Here we go. <laughs> okay, we are glowing hot now. Let's move it into the vacuum chamber very carefully. Okay, here we go. Very carefully move this. Turn off the light. Okay, so there's no air in here whatsoever to transfer the heat, but let's see if it actually stops glowing. So I can feel heat coming out of that, even though there's no air in there. We're at a complete vacuum now. So it's getting dimmer. So right now there's absolutely no medium to transfer this heat through, yet it's still losing heat somehow. Let's see how much longer it lasts. I can still see it glowing slightly in there. Okay, I'm not seeing any light coming from it anymore. It's a little dim red right now.
Okay, it looks like there's hardly any light coming off of it. So it's now dropped below the temperature needed to emit the red light. It's moving now into the infrared range. So which means it's cooled down quite significantly from what it was when we had it in the vacuum chamber. And now as I fill the walls of the vacuum chamber, they're warm. Okay, let's let in some air. Three, two, one. Okay, so how was it actually able to lose heat and absorb into these chamber walls? They're extremely hot now to the touch. So somehow, even without air in there, it was able to transfer heat. Well, you could maybe say that it went through the base, but the heat capacity of this wood and these screws is almost negligible compared to the heat capacity of the red hot nickel ball. And the way it did this is through radiation. And so the three main methods of heat transfer are through conduction, which is something has to be touching it, convection, which means it's moving the hot stuff away from it, and then radiation, which means it's actually electromagnetic radiation carrying the heat away. And that's how this was able to cool down. And so these walls were absorbing all of the infrared radiation coming from that, actually cooling it down. Now, if you're surprised that this was able to transfer heat so easily without air around it, it's not that surprising if you actually remember the sun. So even though the sun is 93 million miles away, through 93 million miles of vacuum, it can still transfer its heat to the earth. That's why if you've ever been close to a big fire, right when it flames up, you can immediately feel the heat of it, even when you're very far away. That doesn't mean that the hot air is getting to you, but you're actually feeling the radiation from the fire, and that's heating up your skin. And this is really interesting when you think about it. Basically, it means that no matter how far apart things are, even if there's no medium in between them, eventually they will all come to equilibrate at the same temperature. In fact, it even gets worse than this. Right now, the universe has pockets of hot things and cold things, but because those things are always radiating heat, the hot things are radiating heat and the cold things are absorbing it, that means that eventually, everything in the universe is going to equilibrate at the same temperature. And when things are at the same temperature, that means you can't do any work. And this is called the heat death of the universe. But it's predicted that the heat death of the universe is extremely far in the future, about 10 to the 100 years away. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos out, and head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't yet to check out the new Action Lab subscription box. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.